Well, hello there, rock stars. Here we are again for another exciting episode of Rock Talk. Here's your rock. Let's talk about it. I wanted to take a step back this episode and talk about some important fundamentals of rocks, and that is the rock cycle. The rock cycle. But it's the rock cycle episode. Do, 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 do. What is a rock cycle? How do rocks cycle? I mean, can you take this rock, put it, put it on a unicycle, and will it, will it roll around? Maybe. It'd be a really cool episode, actually. But no, the rock cycle is actually a um, process where rocks can turn from one kind of rock into another kind of rock. It encompasses the magnificent journey of rocks on planet Earth. There are three different rock types, if you remember, that I explained back on my chert video. There are sedimentary, igneous, and metamorphic rocks. Those make up the three pillars of rock types that exist on planet Earth. The first type, igneous rocks, were the original types of rocks that were found on planet Earth. Way back about three billion years ago, when the Earth was just being founded, the only rocks around were molten, liquid, igneous rocks that were superheated and, 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 and melted and all gloopy and gloppy. So those are the original rock types. After a while, the earth cooled and you had um, rocks that solidified, like um, this piece of obsidian here. It is a piece of volcanic glass that cooled so quickly that you can't really see any crystals in it at all. And that is one feature of extrusive igneous rocks. There's another type of igneous rock where it forms deep underground. That's a plutonic igneous rock. Because it forms underground, it doesn't cool as fast as up on the surface, so it has a lot longer to cool and let crystals form, which is why this piece of granite here, you can actually see the crystals. These little black specks here, and even the white pieces in between are also crystals. And you can actually, depending on the lighting, take a good look at the individual crystals in this rock. So those are the two main types of igneous rocks, whether they form on the surface, are extrusive or they are intrusive or plutonic when they form inside the planet, inside the Earth's crust and mantle. Now, igneous rock out on the surface is going to be subjected to wind and, and rain and all kinds of, of little kids kicking them around. They're going to eventually break down into tiny little bits and pieces of other rocks and then they will form the second form of rocks that is the sedimentary rocks. Sedimentary rocks are made up of rock sediment. You take a rock and you smash them together and they crumble into tiny pieces. And those pieces come together, most likely in, in an aqueous environment, an environment with water. They get compacted and squished and they turn into a rock. They, they kind of get cemented together. This piece of sandstone is literally made up of tiny pieces of sand that have been cemented together. Sand that has come from other rocks, similar kinds of rocks, it, it really doesn't matter. Most importantly, there are two big distinctions with sedimentary rocks. The size of the grains in the rock, the sorting of the grains in the rock, and the angularity of the grains that make up the, the composite, that make up that rock. The size is fascinating. The size of sedimentary rocks starts as small as tiny little clay particles that are microscopic in size. We are talking like less than one up to three, four micrometers, a micrometer. That's nuts. Super tiny. You can't see it with your naked eye. Um, and it forms when, you know, you get clay, clay, which is a super fine mud that forms and it's, it's very fa commonly found on deltas and, and bay inlets and that turns into its own rock. It goes 
all the way up to boulders. Anything which, um, despite its, its name, is anything bigger than about 10 inches in size. So anything larger than 10 inches can be a sediment. Well, any size of rock, excuse me, can be a sediment. It can be included in a larger matrix. But anything larger than about 10 inches is a boulder. And you have everything in between. You've got sand, you've got coarse sand, fine sand. The entire sand is a series, actually. You've also got um, gravel and cobbles as well also fall within this range. And that's one important factor, how big the grain size is. The sorting of a sedimentary rock is very important and also tells us a lot about how that rock was formed, where it was formed, where the rocks came from that ended up forming that rock. The um, sorting is how homogeneous the size of the grains are in that rock. So this sandstone, just about all of the grains in here are about the same size. So it's really well sorted where you can have other rocks um, conglomerates are just masses of rocks that are all stuck together and they're all different shapes and sizes. Sometimes you can have a sand next to a cobble, next to some silt, and it's just a big mess that is a very poorly sorted rock, very poorly sorted sedimentary rock. The last feature of sedimentary rocks are the um, angularity of the grains, which I kind of talked about on one of my previous videos, the gray wacky sandstone um, video, where you've got rocks that are really well rounded or that are fairly well rounded where they get um, nice and, and curved. And you have rocks that are really jagged and really, really very, very sharp and they have very sharp edges. That is caused due to how long that rock has been um, kind of in travel, in transit. When this rock initially broke off of its host, its original piece, it was probably very angular. It had a lot of sharp edges as it's traveled, as it's rolled down through creeks and streams. It's gotten more and more rounded. And so you have everything from very angular all the way to really well-rounded, almost circular kinds of rocks. Size, sorting, and angularity of a sedimentary rock can tell you a lot. From sedimentary rocks. There is another, a third feature, the metamorphic grade of geology. This is where things get pretty meta in a literal sense that these rocks have literally been either subject to tremendous pressure or tremendous temperature, or in some cases, both, where you can get a complete um, re- shuffling of characteristics of the rock. Rocks can change. The elements themselves can rearrange, forming completely different compositions. And it's totally crazy. It's literally the most complex of all geology because you can have rocks that have started out as sedimentary, started out as igneous, that have been completely transformed into something else. Or you see you can have bands of, of rocks that have formed that have been pressed and compressed so much that they even turn into waves. They will, um, they will alter and deform based off of the pressure and under the right temperature. Things like that can happen when you get cool, cool, crazy stuff like that that goes on. Different features that you'll see in metamorphic rocks, foliation that commonly occurs when a rock is pressed and squished, their minerals, the different kinds of minerals will start to line up. They'll start to order up based off of the sizes of those minerals, which is really cool. It's kind of crazy. You'll have um, other um, metamorphic rocks that kind of look like they're sedimentary rocks. It looks like they have grains in them when really they are crystal grains that are being um, reformatted and reformed. It's just kind of, it's just wild. And so that kind of completes our circle when this metamorphic rock gets pressed, it gets squeezed or or um, under so much temperature that it melts, it re-solidifies, and then we go back to where we started again, back to igneous, and then the cycle continues, infinitum, forever and ever and ever, the end. In reality though, there are um, multiple ways 
to get to all of these rocks in the cycle. There's no linear fashion. Igneous doesn't always lead to sedimentary, doesn't always lead to metamorphic. Sometimes you can get igneous rock, go straight to metamorphic, and it's just metamorphic until it melts again, and then go back to igneous, and maybe back to metamorphic, and back to igneous, and back to metamorphic, and back to igneous, over and over and over and over and over again until maybe it's lucky enough to get to the surface and get turned into a sedimentary rock, and then it gets deposited. That can certainly happen. Or you can get a sedimentary rock that turns into an igneous rock, that turns back into a sedimentary rock, that turns into a metamorphic rock, that goes to a me another metamorphic rock, that turns into a different igneous rock, and then goes back to being a sedimentary rock. But then it gets put on display and it is, in a, is in a museum forever, and then it never goes anywhere. And that's kind of sad. So do your public due diligence, break into museums and steal all the rocks and release them into the wild. Be free! Be free, my brethren! Ah! Or you can, you can be like me and, and hold on tight-fisted to them. Don't take my rocks. Don't take my rocks. So, rock stars, I hope you enjoyed the video today, talking about the rock cycle, different kinds of rocks. You got your igneous, sedimentary, metamorphic, Three rock types, three different kinds of rocks. Let me know how, what you thought. If you liked the video, uh, thumbs up, subscribe, comment down below. Let me know. I'd love to hear from you. Um, if you have any recommendations on what you'd like to see next as well, that's really important. Because I'm just kind of out here for free rocking it around. Uh, just kind of throwing, throwing rocks at a wall until something sticks. So let me know if there's something I've been talking about that you want to find out more. Until next time. Rock stars, keep it real, um, uh, and uh, 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 um, uh, and uh, keep on cycling. <laughs> yeah.